Hello and welcome to this demonstration for the Inventor Product Design Suite. My name is Rusty Belcher and I'm going to be going through this demonstration with you today. I'm going to start off this demonstration in one of the components that's part of the Product Design Suite and that's Navisworks. Navisworks allows me to look at and handle models that are incredibly large, actually larger than my CAD system can actually handle. We're actually looking at an entire deck of a ship in this example and you can see the entire deck if I hop down onto one of the decks we'll talk about one of the benefits of Navisworks is that it works with so many different kinds of CAD applications the append command over here allows me to just uh, bring in data from a number of different sources Navisworks of course but all the Autodesk formats are supported uh, we also have uh, DWF, FBX, Leica Point Clouds, Revit, Step, IGIS, ACES and so on if I were to turn around, we're going to be focusing quite a bit on Inventor and AutoCAD data today. Those are certainly uh, data that you can generate with the product design suite. But of course, STEP, IGIS, and ACES, those are the major translations that come out of any you know, mechanical software on the market. Siemens NX is already supported. That's a brand new tool that's on the market today. CATIA V4, CATIA V5, uh, the DWF design review tool, all of the Auto desk formats or all the Autodesk products are capable of creating a DWF file so whether it's Revit, uh, building systems, uh, MEP, uh, civil design, all of those tools create DWF files and you can bring those DWF files into Navisworks and utilize them with your design. And Google SketchUp as well. Google SketchUp is one of the uh, largest free uh, modeling libraries on the internet that's available for you. If you haven't taken a look at that library, it's called the uh, Google SketchUp 3D Warehouse. Go out and take a look at it and see what all is available. But uh, let me give you a little tour of this ship design. Uh, I just take, I basically jumped into another what we call a viewpoint, and this is one compartment back of where we were, or aft of where we were, and this is a gym that's set up. Uh, a lot of times on board ship space is very limited so right beside the pumps amidst the piping and HVAC and electrical wireways you'll see exercise equipment uh, all over the ship wherever they can find a place to put a piece of exercise equipment they can and Navisworks uh, is a great tool that allows me to uh, visualize or with real-time fly through and walk through capabilities uh, models that are incredibly large now I'm not really here to give you a Navisworks example so let's just take a, a quick look at some of these other compartments I have a birthing area set up on this particular deck and we're able to communicate very easily what that birthing area would look like our ship stores and all of our storage areas have been documented uh, again I'm not going to focus a lot on the weapons handling aspect of Navisworks but we can certainly put some things into motion and animate uh, a few of these designs as well and I can jump over here into our machine our command and control center and show you that again Navisworks can handle models that are just incredibly large now our demonstration today is going to really focus over here in the machinery space and we're here to talk about uh, some piping layout some of the auto routing functions that are available inside of uh, the product design suite premium edition and I'm gonna walk around uh, the corner here and uh, this demonstration certainly is aimed at a boiler manufacturer and this is just just to make a little note of some of the things Navisworks can handle this is a point cloud of a boiler that's been placed in our design we can certainly uh, utilize some of these real-world laser scans in our design so we here we have a, a reality or a, a real boiler in context of our digital model Navisworks certainly allows us to do that but we're going to focus on this as this uh, piece of machinery up here today in our demonstration I this is a, 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 a piping system that I got from a customer uh, quite a long time ago actually this we've always called it Lily and Lily's kind of a, a auto routing playground that I use whenever I have to teach auto routing or demonstrate auto routing I certainly uh, tend to utilize this example so here I have it in context of the ship design If I walk up to it and take a look uh, we are going to focus I think first on how I generated the frame for this I'm going to take you through and show you the frame generator capabilities of Inventor in the product design suite I'm then going to show you how I built this tank back here I'm going to walk in here and take a look at this particular tank I want you to see the part modeling capabilities of Inventor and the product design suite and we'll finish up by focusing on the pipe routing capabilities that are available in the product design suite premium edition
So the first thing I want to focus on in our demonstration today is the frame of our design. And to build the frame, I'm going to utilize a function inside of Inventor called the Frame Generator. So I'm going to open up an assembly and I have my basic design of the frame done with a simple sketch and a couple of simple extrusions. And this is going to serve as the skeleton for my design. On the Design tab, I'm going to choose to use the Frame Generator. The Frame Generator allows me to select from uh, almost the entire steel book as far as steel shapes go. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab a square tube. And we're going to stick with about a six by six by a quarter for this design. Now I can come in and just do a simple selection and I can actually select multiple parts at the same time. You can hold the shift button down if you don't want to select a particular edge or if you want to deselect it. And I'm basically going to select the edges of these solid features. And then over in the browser, I want to select this entire base sketch. I want all of that to be part of my design as well. Except for this edge and this edge right here. Those are going to be channel bars. So once I have all of my edges selected, I'm simply, I'm simply going to select OK and we'll let the frame generator name all of, all of the components and place all of those components in our design. Now I do want to add the channel bars while I'm here so I'm going to start the frame generator again and change the family. In this case I want to use a U-shape and again something about uh, 6 by 12 pound. We'll select that edge and that edge. We'll click OK and add those parts to our design. Now I'm going to take the visibility off from our base part and focus on our design. So you can see the frame generator has done about 80% of the work for me. I have to go in now and supply the other 20% that's unique here and, and in this case it's basically the end cuts that we need to determine. And there are so many different things I can do with end cuts. I can miter them, I can notch them, I can trim them. Well, let's take a look at the miter first. Uh, if you've ever used the uh, fillet command inside of AutoCAD you'll see that uh, this command is almost identical to that for doing these sharp corners with a miter cut. You simply select the two members of the design and apply the miter. On this platform right here, I want to use the trim to frame command, which again, very similar to adding a fillet or a corner inside of AutoCAD. The only thing different here is that you have to pick the long member first and then the short member long member, short member. We can actually use the same command down here where the channel bar, I want the channel bar to be the long member and the square tube to be the short member. We'll trim these four corners up. and I'll spin the part around very easy with the orbit command. So there we've got our trimming done. The next command I want to show you is trim and extend and this is a very nice way for you to trim multiple members to a selected face. So all of these uprights as an example they need to be trimmed so that they meet this face right here and click OK and you'll see that that edit happens to all of those components at the same time. And I do want to finish this up for our example so as you bear with me here I'm going to go in and add some other trims here.
I think I'll finish up by selecting these four vertical members and trimming them to this lower face right here. So in a matter of minutes, really, we have created the initial frame or an example of the initial frame that we're going to be using in our design. So now that I have the frame done, I need to begin creating the drawing that's going to document the design. To do that, I'm going to create a DWG file. And this is a standard DWG that's been used by Autodesk for quite a while. Anyone that has AutoCAD can open up this drawing and utilize it. I'm going to create a, a couple of views here. Here's our front view, our side view, our top view, and isometric view. So there are all of our drawing views created pretty quickly. I'm going to go ahead and edit this view. I want to shade it, take advantage of uh, some of the printer capabilities we have now. And I also need to begin, uh, again, adding dimensions and parts lists and things like that to our design. So I'm going to start my dimension command. I'll just go to my architectural format, and I want to document the, uh, the size of our design, the general size. And I also want to document the actual members themselves. And to do that, I'm going to utilize a parts list. So we'll just bring in a parts list over here. And as I zoom in, you can see that the quantity is already set up to uh, use as the, uh, the order amount of each of the general sizes and shapes that we've used in our design. And I do want to go in and annotate each of the individual members. And to do that, I'm going to use the balloon command. So I'm going to drop off the command right here. And I, I want to make a point here that you know if this member is exactly the same as this member, you don't have to worry about that, that they'll come in uh, and basically be identified the same way. And I do want to just dive into this a little bit more. Uh, I want to go in and talk about the balloon styles and all the ways you can configure Inventor to do your framework. So here is the actual balloon style. And I'm going to choose to use a split balloon. And instead of item and quantity, I want to add the, the overall length of the part. And the length of each of these parts is controlled by a little parameter. I, I know the name is G underscore L. And I'll move that up to the second position there. So now when I come in, my balloons are going to give me the item number, which corresponds to the parts list. And it's also going to give me the length of the item I've attached the arrowhead to. So I can come in very quickly and just drop in each of these. I think these notes would be very useful for the guys out in the shop who are actually making these components. Again, just want to make a point that if you use the same item twice, you will get the same item number. So again, very quickly, we have begun the documentation, the drawing documentation for our frame. We're not too far away from finishing the complete design. And I hope you see at this point how the frame generator uh, along with the documentation tools inside of Inventor really do make uh, frame design so much easier than the classic 2D approach. Now before I leave the frame design, I do want to bring up a question. What happens if the general design for the frame changes? And we have all of these components that would need to be modified. Uh, so a change at this point in a classic approach to frame design could cause you quite a bit of effort and time and expense. So let me jump back over here to our design. And we're going to make a general change. I'm going to go back to that uh, base part that we did earlier. And as a matter of fact, I'm just going to jump into the base part where it's the active component. I'm going to make a couple of changes. I'm going to change our length here from 60 to 65 inches. Uh, that, that should cause uh, quite a number of parts to be updated. And also, this extrusion right here, I'm going to change that. I'm going to go back in and edit the feature. And I'm just going to drag it upwards a little bit more, uh, right about there. We'll click OK. Now. When I click return to go back into the main assembly, you're going to see all of the components update to the new size of the base component. And again, I'm just going to take the visibility off of the base part. And let's jump over and see what happens when we go back over to the drawing. You're going to see it update 
um, very quickly just the same as you saw the assembly update and if I were to go in all the links of the parts are now showing at their proper length and the bill of material is also showing or displaying the correct information in way of our change. The next thing I want to focus on is just the general modeling practices that you'll find inside of Autodesk Inventor. And for this demonstration, I'd like to model a simple tank that we'll use later on in the demonstration. Well, the first thing I want to do is create a new component. We create components from templates, and I'm just going to choose a standard uh, inch-based template. This puts me right into my first sketch, and I can go ahead and select from a number of sketch tools, very similar to the tools that you're going to see inside of AutoCAD. I'm just going to draw a rectangle, and my rectangle, I'm going to put in some information here. For the length of this, I'm just going to type in length equals 20. This is going to be the base plate of my tank, and it's going to be a half inch thick, so we'll just enter a dimension for that there. And I want the rectangle to sit right at zero. This little yellow point is zero, so I simply add a geometric constraint that places that rectangle so it'll always be centered at zero. Now I'll start my extrude command. Inside of Inventor you see uh, a number of the tools or all of the tools are based on a ribbon and the ribbon changes depending on what you're doing. So as I start the uh, extrude command I can simply finish the sketch. It puts me right into the 3D modeling area and I can start the extrude command and in this case I want to set it up to be 11 inches and we're going to center that at zero again. So here we have uh, our first feature. Inventor is a feature based modeling solution and you'll see the feature that we just created show up in the browser and later on I can come back and make changes to that as I need them. I'm going to create a sketch on this face here and I want to use the offset command. Again very similar to what you'll see in a tool like AutoCAD. It works as the same way inside of Inventor and I'm going to add a dimension uh, 0.75 to that particular line. Now we're going to drill some holes on this sketch and, and just like uh, I would drill holes out in the shop I'm going to add a center punch at each corner and I'll finish my sketch and then start the hole command. So as I can start the hole command you can see that each of the holes appears and I can come in and with a simple gesture I can drag the hole to the desired size and in this case I want to create a half inch hole and we'll click OK. So there you can see each of the holes in the corner of our base plate. Now I want to uh, begin the process of modeling the tank that's going to sit on top of this. I'm going to create another sketch on one of my central planes, on my central work plane. And we'll just center this up. And I'm going to project my geometry. I'm just going to project this edge here and draw a line upwards and I'll place a circle at the top of that line. Now as you're generating this geometry you do have the opportunity to type in a value and uh, you can also incorporate parameters on the fly. So I'm just going to type in here tank underscore DIA equals 10. And uh, let's go ahead and generate the height of this tank and what we'll do is kind of use a formula tank underscore DIA uh, plus one. And let's go ahead and put some parentheses in here. And we will divide this by two plus one. There we go. So we have uh, the value of our tank divided by two and then we'll add one to our one inch to that. So the tank six inches above the base plate. Let's go ahead and extrude this. We're going to extrude it uh, both directions. And this is going to be length minus 4. So that the tank length will always be 2 inches less than the base plate length. You can use parameters on the fly. You don't have to. I just wanted to highlight that uh, possibility in this demonstration today. And the next thing I want to do is add the hemispherical ends on the tank. And to do that, I'm simply going to go in and select one of my basic work planes. There's a nice little tool here that allows me to look right through the part to the to the sketch plane. It's called Slicing Graphics. And I can automatically project all of my cut edges through the current sketch plane. 
Now I'm going to take a, a line right here. We're going to give this line uh, a value of 2 inches. And then we're going to add an arc from this point to this point that passes through that point right there. Very easy to sketch inside of Inventor. Uh, I'll finish my sketch and start the Revolve command. It's another handy feature. I simply select an axis, and that Revolve feature is added to the end of the tank. To fillet an edge, we simply select the edge and use the fillets from the heads-up display. And you can drag this little arrow here and set it up to whatever size you want. Or in this, for this example, I'm just going to type in uh, I want a one inch radius there. We'll then mirror these two features. And for the mirror plane, I'm going to select my work plane because we centered our part at zero. We always have those work planes. And there's our tank. The support, uh, we'll add the support at the bottom. It's just a little easier to do it that way. And I'm going to use this uh, unique little rectangle command. It's a rectangle with a center. So as I draw the rectangle, it'll draw it from the center out. And you can see you have previews for the dimensions. So how about I type in 0.5 for that. I'll tab over. And this one is always going to be tank underscore diameter minus 1. So it'll always be one inch less than the tank diameter. I'm going to extrude this. And I'm going to specify that I like to extrude it to the cylinder here. And I just want to make sure it's a join so it adds material to our design. We'll do a little pattern here. We'll simply select that feature. Um, I'm going to specify my direction there. And I want to uh, just specify that it goes you know, from the middle out and I always want three supports. And for the length, let's go ahead and type in length divided by three. We'll click OK. So there we have our three support plates for our design. I want to add a couple of nozzles. So to finish this up, I'm going to generate uh, another feature on this middle plane. And again, I'm just going to slice my graphics and project my edges. When you project the edges, you get these nice little uh, projections and uh, each arc has a center point. And this just makes it very nice for me to uh, draw this circle right at the center of the part. And this is going to be a two inch diameter. And I'm going to extrude that. And again, if you don't want to type in the parameters each time, you can list your parameters. It's going to be tank diameter uh, divided by two. And then we'll add one inch to that. We'll click OK. So there I have the nozzle coming out on the side. And I also want a nozzle at the top of this. So I'm just going to finish up by doing a circular pattern around this object. I want two objects at 90 degrees. And I'm going to flip my rotation. So you can see the preview always shows me where the part's going to come in. Now I want to save my part, and I actually have a part over here called Sample Tank. I'm just going to overwrite that. So now that I have my part, I need to begin, just in our, as in our previous example, doing my documentation. So I'm going to start again another AutoCAD DWG file, and I want to create my views. In this case, I'm going to need to use a quarter scale, one to four. So I'll do my front view, my side view, my top view, isometric view. We'll go ahead, just like we did before, and create those views very quickly with Inventor. And I do want to shade this view as well. Now, we have a number of annotation tools that are built into Inventor, and I want to share a few of those with you. Again, I think I've shown you a couple of them already. But the, the dimension tool, I'm going to go ahead and drop in a dimension here. Uh, what is 20 inches by 11 inches? We can certainly, if we, if we dimension to a circle, we're going to get a diameter automatically. And it really doesn't matter which orientation that circle is. It's going to give us the diameter symbol uh, very quickly and very efficiently. We can also dimension in the isometric view. Uh, I don't get a chance to show this off a lot, but there you go. We can come up to our isometric view and dimension this one as well.
And just as in our previous example, if you were to go back in and uh, uh, you know a, a change occurs and you have to update the tank, uh, you could certainly do that. All we have to do is go to our parameter table. Uh, we have things like length and tank diameter. Those are the things that we renamed on the fly. And I can actually change this to, I don't know, let's go with 25 inches. And I'll click enter and you can see the tank actually update to suit. Not only does it update in this view, but it updates in the drawing view as well. Now one of the things I don't get a chance, I'm going to undo that change. So we'll go ahead and put it right back where it was. One of the things I don't get a chance to do a lot is to, to talk about how we would implement Inventor if we were to come on site and work with you and set it up to do, you know, and efficiently the things that you do as a designer. So if you do tanks like this, uh, you know, you're not finished at this point. Of course you have your design and, and it's ready to go, but um, what happens with the next tank? How do you handle the next tank? Well, if it's similar to this tank, all you have to do is come up to our application icon and use the save as template command. This allows you to create a template of this tank. So you can build in as much information into this tank as possible. And the next time you need to create a tank, it is so much easier to do. And let me give you an example of that. I've already saved this as a template. So let's go ahead and show you, you know, after implementation, uh, what you could actually achieve with Inventor. You could start a new part, and instead of using the default templates, I'm going to go to my common part temp templates, and here I see the tank with base. I can go ahead and start it, and I've added a, a, a bit more information. I'm using the little chrome color, and you can see the reflection, and I've added some text embossing to the tank as well. But if I start my parameter table, I can quickly come in. I'm just going to filter out to these uh, renamed. So you can see I have length, tank diameter, nozzle, tank name, things like that. So if I scoot this over a little bit, um, I could quickly come in and you know change my tank to 30 inches. I just hit the enter button and you'll see that update automatically. I can modify my diameter to 12. You'll see the diameter and the base update. And you know even change the name. Um, I'll go ahead and change it to imagine it and you'll see the name update on the part automatically. So it's not just about how easy it is to model Inventor or how easy it is to model in Inventor the first time. It's how Inventor can be set up to do these common tasks for you and to make them easy as possible. You know, we try to get the 80% of the design that's the same every single time and get that into a template uh, so that you can concentrate on the 20% that's different every single time. So now we're going to focus on the pipe routing capabilities that are available in the Inventor Product Design Suite Premium Edition. To do that, I'm going to open up a file. I mentioned before I always called this example Lily. This was actually some customer data that was given to me quite a, a while ago. And I've always viewed this as a pipe routing playground. Whatever I wanted to do, whatever pipe route I wanted to create, I could come in and create it in this particular demo set. So here we have a pump and a kettle and a couple of condensers uh, on top of a frame. We've already talked about how we modeled some of the components and how we built the frame. What I'd like to do though is to come in and actually add that tank we were working on earlier to this design. And to do that I'm actually going to create a couple of components in place. You don't have to use the frame generator to create frame components. You can create them one part at a time. And I'm going to begin this by choosing a custom part template. I have set up for a four by two by quarter inch uh, rectangular tube. I'm going to drop this off in the background and of course it's a little too short. I'm sure you've had this happen before in your past practices where you cut a part too short. Well this is by design in this particular case. I'm going to click return and I want to show you how to join components together with the uh, product design suite with Inventor. I'm going to use just regular conventional constraints and these are basically location rules that allow me to determine how parts are, are oriented and how they relate to each other. So I'm going to declare those two faces are mating together. We'll apply that and then I'll declare that these two faces are flush. Very simple and easy to do. Now of course this part is too short so I'm going to go over and right click on the part and I'm going to set it to be adaptive. And adaptivity is something that's really unique to Inventor. It allows for certain values in the part to stretch to suit the conditions you place on the part. 
So now I can start another location rule. I want to specify that that face there is going to mate to this face here. And if I click OK, you'll see that part stretch to suit that given situation. So that's another way that you can work with custom part templates in the uh, Inventor application. I'm going to add my second component using the Pattern tool. We'll select our part. This will be a rectangular pattern. We'll specify the direction and the distance. This is nice. Anytime Inventor asks you for a distance, you can measure from one face to another or to any two points. So very quickly, we've got our platform for our tank. Uh, in our current design. Now I'm going to place the tank. We're going to use this particular tank. It's not the exact tank I was using earlier, but it's one that's very similar to it. And again, I'm going to start the constraints and I'm going to specify that this tank sits on top of our part. And I'm also going to specify that the front edge of the base plate is flush right there. So right now, I have not fully defined the location of this tank yet. Uh, as you can see, it still moves around, still free to move. And it's important that as your design develops, that implementing change to the design is very, very easy. And so I'm going to leave this tank floating for a while and begin running the pipe to it. And I want, you to sh I want to show you how versatile working inside of Inventor can actually be. So now that I've got my tank, I want to begin the process of generating a pipe run from this particular port to this port. And to do that, I'm going to go over here to my ribbon, and I'm going to select the tube and pipe component that's built into this version of the Inventor, or this version of Inventor in the Product Design Suite. I'm going to use the default naming schemes for this demonstration, but at any point when you see a dialog, it pops up and it offers me to change the name. You can generate any name or use any name you want to. The first thing typically you do is check your current tube and pipe styles. And there are a number of pipe styles that are built into the tool that you can generate your own very easily. And I am going to modify this one right here. This is uh, some steel threaded pipe. I want to use that first. So I'm going to double click it. I'm, I'm simply going to set it to one inch uh, in diameter. We'll click Save. And I can dismiss this particular dialog box. Now we want to begin a new route. Now for this first example, I'm going to do what I call auto routing. I'm just going to let the tool determine what is the best XYZ path to get from the start point to the end point. I'm going to go up and select the route tool. We'll specify that the route starts here and that it ends here. Now, because there are different solutions to this, you can quickly cycle through. Uh, I, particular, I like this particular one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and agree to that. And you can see it does the route for me. Uh, if I select Finish Route and I want to come over here and generate the parts, I click Populate Route. And you'll see Inventor take each of the segments of the route and put the appropriate piece of pipe on top of it. So here we have our particular design. Now, I'm going to finish this route and I want to get back out to my segment uh, or back out to my assembly. And I want to show you how, actually, how very nice it is to design with this particular setup. Um, before I modify the tank though, I want to create my drawing. So let's go and create a new DWG file just like we did in our previous examples. I'm going to come in and generate the front view and the side view. And we'll do a top view and an isometric view here as well. Now I've worked with a number of customers and one of the things, uh, especially with the, when it gets to tube and pipe, one of the things they all share in common is the challenge of making changes to the design. So here we see a nice simple pipe run that we just generated. Uh, we see it in the top view, the front view, and even the side view as well. Well, what would happen, or how much work would it represent if I moved the tank at this particular point? And let's face it, this does happen. So I'm going to come in and basically I'm going to I'm going to drag the tank up a little bit. And I might even scoot it over to the side a little bit. And I want you to see how the pipe run updates automatically to suit that particular change. And if I jump back over to my drawing, you'll see the drawing views update to suit the change that we just made to our design. Very, very nice and easy way for you to bring or to send the changes or make changes in your design and have them update your design. Uh, automatically so you don't have to worry about missing a view or 
uh, trimming certain line geometry or forgetting a certain place in the design where you've made or where that change needs to be updated as well. Much uh, easier and nicer to do it this way than that classic 2D approach. So now I want to do some more pipe runs. We're going to do a different uh, piping style. We're going to use a different piping style this time. I'm going to go back and start another pipe run. And this time I'm going to modify my standard uh, to this one right here, the ISO 2531 flanged ductile iron pipe and fittings. I'm simply going to right click and make it active. And I'm going to double click it so just so you can see the setups. Uh, you can declare what elbows are used for the 45 and the 90 and what couplings are used. You can also determine the rules in this particular case, uh, my minimum and my incremental value. And I'm just going to, uh, for this demonstration, change my minimum value. Just let me make sure I've got that set. All right, so let's uh, start a new route. And again, uh, for this example, I'm going to use typical auto routing at first, and then I want to make changes to the route. So I'm going to start my route. It's going to start up here, and it's going to end here. Now, I need to make sure I pick the other direction here. I want it to go upwards like that. And I can cycle through the solutions that are available. I like that particular one, but I happen to know that that's not actually giving me enough room right here. So I'm going to need to move some segments around. I want to move these segments around, and in this example, I am just going to be dragging these things around a little bit. Uh, I want this segment here to come down. I want to get a little bit more room right there. That should work. I should have enough room there. So I'll finish the route and populate it, and you'll see uh, the flanges and the fittings come in and fill in the design automatically. I want to add another run here. This is uh, going to be from this flange to this flange here. And I'm going to use a combination of auto routing and manual routing. You can actually manually route your pipes or, or mount your uh, route your pipes any way you want. I'm going to start a new route here. And we are going to begin on this lower flange. Now you can hover over top of this axis and type in any value you want. Um, I don't particularly know the value here. I actually want it to come over until it meets this work plane. Now in order to make that happen, I'm going to right click and use what we call point snap. And I'll come down and select this work plane and it'll automatically give me that length to where that line at that angle meets the plane I selected. I then can use these uh, heads up displays to actually add these 45 degree bends to the pipe. And I could, again, come in and type in uh, a particular value here. Although, at this point, I'm finished my manual route. I want to simply come over and select uh, this particular uh, flange as the endpoint. I'll select the correct direction and cycle through the solution till I get the one I like. When I have that, I'm ready to go. I can finish the route and populate it. Very, very easy to add pipe to your design using this routing technique. I'm going to add one more for our example here. We add another route and it's basically the same thing we just did. Again I want to start here. Uh, I'm going to use my point snap to make sure it comes out at that 45 degree angle and meets that particular work plane. I'll put a 45 degree bend in it and select the end point. Again using my select other direction tool and I'll cycle through the solutions. Simply finish the route and populate it. I do want to add a valve and show you how that works. And to do that, I'm going to come over here to my content area and select place. This takes me out to Inventor's Content Center. And I can choose from just a wide variety of parts uh, from uh, all types of piping segments you can see in the list here for the fittings and the conduits, the caps, the couplings. I'm down here in the valve category and I'm going to choose this little flanged globe valve. We'll click OK and I'll select the proper size from the preset list. And I'm simply going, notice if I touch one of the corresponding pipes, the valve automatically hops into position. So I'm just going to place it right there. You'll see the break. And then I can very easily just drag it up into the proper orientation I want the valve going upwards, and when it's in the 
correct orientation, I simply right click and select done. And I've added that or incorporated that into my route. Now I'm going to finish this out and we'll finish the entire tube and pipe options. And here you can see our design uh, of you know three or four pipe routes that we've created. Now I want to jump over and check out my drawing views at this point. So I'm going to jump back over here. We'll actually see all of this information added to our drawing views. So you can see how nice it is to have the drawing automatically update when changes are made to your design. I've said it quite often that in Inventor, the drawing is the model, the model is the drawing. If you change one, the other is going to update to suit. So here we have our design. Um, I am going to jump onto, let's create another new sheet. Uh, and in this particular sheet, I'm just going to do an isometric view. And I want to focus on the parts list capabilities uh, of the inventor application. So I'm going to go over here to the annotate side and again start a parts list of my view. We'll click OK and drop this off right here. And by default just about everything, all the assemblies and pipe runs are, are, are rolled up together. So if I were to come in and modify the parts list, I can actually expand any of these pipe runs. Um, let's see, uh, here is there's the um, stand. Let's go ahead and expand that so we can see all the parts that make up the stand. And maybe we'll expand one of the pipe runs here. I'll click OK and you, you'll see the parts list immediately expand to accommodate all the new parts that we're allowing to show at this particular point. I'll start the balloon tool and come over here and start to just balloon some of the components. I want you to notice how uh, the balloon tool actually does work. I can actually come in and uh, balloon a component or a couple of components of the frame and you'll see the individual item numbers there. I can also balloon a couple of the components of the a couple of the, the pumps and the kettle and things like that. And we can even balloon some of the items in the pipe runs. Completely up to us as how we want to document this particular design. Of course it's nice so we can come in and edit the views and shade them, take advantage of our color printers now and do these nice shaded views inside of our design. But I want you to see uh, one of the major hurdles that people that do this kind of work have to face is the parts list. And I want you to notice that you know basically the assembly is the parts list and again as we make changes or add things to the assembly or remove things our parts list will update automatically. The last thing I want to focus on is some of the downstream benefits you get once you have a 3D model of your design and one of the main benefits is visualization. The product design suite is equipped with two tools that greatly help us when we're generating visualization files. It's Autodesk Showcase and Autodesk 3ds Max Design. The video that you're looking at right now was created using the Autodesk Showcase application. Once I had my 3D model, I was able to put it into Showcase and generate the animations and the images that you see in this video. It took about 90 minutes to produce these and I stitched them all together using Windows Movie Maker Live. 3ds Max Design is also included in the product design suite and 3ds Max Design is one of those tools they use to make those summer blockbuster movies that we see all the time. There's really no visual effect you can't achieve given the time and the experience that it takes to run 3ds Max Design. Well this is going to conclude our presentation for today. I really appreciate your time and attention as we've reviewed some of the pipe routing capabilities that are included in Autodesk's product design suite. If you have questions about the contents of this demonstration, please feel free to contact your local Imaginate Technologies account representative.